Hey there guys, what's up? It's the Michael M here, 1987, back with another video. Here to give you a review of Uncharted 4, A Thief's End for PlayStation. I know, it's been almost a month since this game came out, and I'm sorry for all the late reviews, I've been slacking a lot, but I'm gonna make up for that now with this video review of Uncharted 4, Thief's End. A Thief's End, possibly the last chapter of this great franchise, this critically acclaimed series. I loved it since the beginning, and if this is the end, it's a great way to send off the franchise into possibly golden glory. Let's just say that. So the game of Uncharted deals with Uncharted 4 actually. Uncharted deals with the protagonist Nathan Drake, a basically fortune hunter who knows his history of a lot of things here. You know, that series he's learned about his, uh, uh, Sir Francis Drake, also about uh, Marco Polo and his adventures to Shambhala, around with the pillars and all that stuff. In this story though, we actually start off with a Nathan Drake that's kind of past all that. He's done with that life. He's now a living a life, a normal life. He's a scuba diver with a company where they pick up materials like copper and others to get some minerals to, with a competition with others. And he's also living at home with, with Elena, who he's married to now. He's trying to settle down, forget all that stuff in the past. But he can never really forget it because it's always in the back of his head. As he always feels the need to always try to be for Elena. To always be the man that he failed to be before. So now, in this game, it's much more of a personal conflict than Nathan did anything else. However, this personal conflict becomes harder for him to deal with when his brother, Sam, comes back as he has thought he was dead. But now, Sam is not dead. He's back. And he needs Nathan's help to finish a job if they wanted to for a while. The hunt for Henry Avery's treasure. Basically a pirate. When you have a pirate with treasure, you know there's going to be a lot of golden coins and doublons in the area. Anyways, with Nathan Drake trying to put the past behind him, he decides to do the job anyways for Sam's sake. And get some help along the way with some old friends like Victor Sullivan. Yep, that's right. Good old Victor goddamn Sullivan. That's the name himself. And overall, the story is a lot like the other games' storylines. It deals with these characters, brings them all together like in our, an Indiana Jones Tomb Raider mix hybrid of storytelling, adventure, and excitement. But also has an awesome emotional core to it. See, the game doesn't just deal with these two brothers going hacking out loud, going killing people, blowing up environments, and destroying thousands of dollars of treasure. It's much more of an emotional core between brothers. And that's the theme of Real Uncharted here. It deals with themes of loss, regret, redemption, and most importantly, family. That's the themes of what Uncharted 4 deals with here. And thankfully the cast, characters, and the writing is all done to a perfecto here. Let me say that, perfecto. Weird word to use for this situation, but just let me just say it one more time. Perfecto. It's just that well done for when it comes to the interactions, the dialogue that which they speak, and the characters that Nathan and his group of friends encounter. Most notably, the enemies here. We have Nadine Ross, a, a, a woman who has a, a mercenary group behind her back called Shoreline, who's also working with another character named Rafe, who basically knows Nathan in a way or two. And basically, these two are basically. Uh, going against Nathan in a chase for this Henry Avery's treasure. Now, like I said before, the story of Uncharted 4 is a lot like the uh, old stories of Uncharted 1, 2, and 3, but it doesn't feel any type of repetitive in a way. You see, it takes the story and twists it, like usual, adding its usual sense of adventure, its mystery, and its big revelations. Like always, the Uncharted series knows how to tell its storytelling. Whether it's the past writer and director, or the new team doing this one, possibly ending this series, it's all done to a perfect way, with great pacing, great set pieces, and overall just good old fun to play. You know, Uncharted is like opening a treasure chest and just reveling in all the little trinkets you find. It's that good of a game. And the third, and like every act, every act um, in the game, first, second, and third act, are well done here. However, I will say that the third act, the first act might turn people off because the game actually starts off slow. It deals with a lot more of a walking, learning story-wise. In the other games, you kind of got thrown into the action right away. Remember the sequence in Uncharted 2 when you, had to, when you woke up on a train and the train was halfway off a mountain cliff? Yeah, you're not getting that type of introduction with Uncharted. Instead, you're getting a kind of slow burn, 
but at the end of the day, it's worth every moment of it. It builds the character development for these characters, and it's all done to a perfect well done here. And the editing itself is actually really well done. However, I don't know if it's kind of setting up a possible another game or ending the series, but in my opinion, if Naughty Dog does not want to do any more Uncharted games with the stories that they told, it's fine with me. It's all well done here. Now when it comes to gameplay, Uncharted still shines. You have your three main aspects, your three main core aspects of the Uncharted series. You have your shooting, you have your platforming, and you have your puzzles. Now puzzles here have been um, increased here. There's more puzzles than I would say Uncharted 2 or Uncharted 3 in my opinion. As these ones basically require you to think more. There's a lot more thinking involved, a lot more um, uh, using your journal going back and forth. It's no simple, easy puzzle to do. It reminds me of the puzzle from Uncharted 3 when you had to basically put these four skull, like four uh, squares together in a weird, uh, tentative way. But it's fine with me overall. And when it comes to its platforming, it's reliable as ever in my opinion. I love the platforming in the series, and it's always well done to a perfect cathedral way. Now, of course, last part is the shooting elements. Now, the shooting here is well done, I'll say that. The guns feel great, they have a great boom to them. And the handling and aiming controls can always be customized to be done to a perfect type of style for your gamer sense. And when it comes to additions that they added to the game, they added a few additions. One of the biggest additions that I must say is one of the awesomest additions is the grappling hook. It definitely made me feel like I was Indiana Jones in a video game. You had the grappling hook which can help you traverse into areas, cross the big platforming sections, pull materials like boxes towards you, you can't pull enemies though, which is fine by me. And it's all well done here. I mean, the, the grappling hook has a good amount of use in the game. It's never underutilized or overutilized. It's used to a perfect amount. And that's what I think about Uncharted as a whole. Everything is done to a perfect amount. Nothing is overused or underused. It's all done to a perfect extent. And overall, it's all well done here. And, this, and of course, like an Uncharted game would do, there's always just set pieces and these epic sequences with epic moments I feel like you're in a big action movie blockbuster directed by some badass actor, action director, let's just say that. The action sequences in these games, in this game particularly, is one of, is just outstanding. Particularly one in Madagascar, which I will not spoil, but let me just say it was truly one of the most awesome moments and adrenaline fueling moments I had in a game in a long time. You know, it had that moment where it just grabbed you by the arm and never let you go when it comes to the gameplay. Now, of course, just like the games usually do, Uncharted decides to give it a little bit more of an open sandbox approach when it comes to exploration here. Certain moments in the game you have a vehicle, like a boat, a car, where you basically can explore big areas and basically just explore like any game would let you do. It allows you to go around and explore the entire area. And while there's not tons of treasures in all these areas, most of them are in the linear moments of the game, it still actually feels good to do. It feels great. And just the overall feeling of it being much more, even though linear, having that open feel to it definitely makes Uncharted 4 feel much more than just an open game. It feels like something special. And that's what's amazing about Uncharted. Let's just say that overall. Everything about the game has this moment where it just grabs you and never lets you go. That is truly impressive, may I just say. In fact, the only thing that really, um, how can I say it, surprised me was how the third act was really constructed overall, how it was um, structured. It, it doesn't overstate its welcome, in my opinion, the third act. But overall, that way it was done was really unique. I'm not going to explain or tell you what, because I want to play, or I'm not going to spoil too much of the game for you, but I want you to play this game for yourself because this is one of those games that you need to play. Not because it's critically in love. Because it's one of those games that just are special. It's one of those games like the moment when you played Bioshock Infinite or The Last of Us, where it has that moment in the game where it makes you feel like you are playing something else, or playing something truly cinematic. That is what Uncharted 4 is. And that's what the Uncharted series altogether is as a whole. It has that feeling of adventure that you never really had in other games. And thankfully, it's done to a perfect scent here. That's like the overall feeling of the entire game. It overall feels amazing. Nothing ever felt wrong. The controls are top notch, well done. And I don't know if you can modify it to the PS3 version with the aiming to L1 and R1 to R2 and L2 and R2, but it all feels outstanding here. 
and the frame rate overall is really consistent. Now I must say that the PS uh, for the constant campaign, the game is locked at 30 frames per second. When it goes to multiplayer, it's 60 frames per second. All right, that's all I gotta say about the frame rate. But overall, it is truly outstanding how the frame rate is handled. And let me just say one more thing: is just how graphically impressive this game is. Visually beautiful. One of the this is possibly the best looking PS4 game until next year, possibly. And overall, the campaign as a whole is truly well done. I will say that. It's truly outstanding, and I loved every moment of the campaign. I'll play it over and over again, no matter what, even on the higher difficulties. But, like always, Uncharted does not only have a campaign, it also has a multiplayer mode. Yup, and it's even better than ever. Better than Uncharted 2 and 3, it's much more consistent, better hit detection than the last games, and overall just feels more fun. You have customizable characters, taunts like a twerk for some reason, and the dab, and some other ones, but overall, multiplayer is well done. You can customize your, your character skins, your gun skins, you can customize your loadouts. And while there's only four multiplayer modes as of right now, with team deathmatch, ranked team deathmatch, plunder, and command, it overall, it feels awesome. It's like The Last of Us is multiplayer, you know, even though they had two modes, they felt consistent and they felt like it was enough for the game. It didn't feel overbloated with content or modes to the point where you, the, all the servers were kind of scattered. Instead, they had a main focus on multiplayer. What's cool about multiplayer is that a lot of the elements from the campaign, like the grappling hook and those controls, are well used here to a perfect extent. I'll just say that. Overall, it all feels smooth. I did notice some hiccups while playing, even to today, where the game would just slow down, or there'll be server issues from my personal opinion, where I, the game just slowed down to a slow type of point. But overall, it was truly impressive, the, the entire experience. I mean, it feels fun, it's awesome to connect, it's easy to connect with friends and play online forever. What's cool about the game is also daily challenges. Three star for three challenges, and then you get more the more you play. It's well done and uh, structured to a point where it feels just overall well done, I'll say that. Um, now, now, there's also microtransactions, which I'm not a big fan of in this game. Now, the microtransactions here are used for uncharted points where you can just basically buy any skin in the game, which in my opinion is kind of ridiculous. I mean, I wish some of these skins were basically earned through actual progression in the most way, otherwise, other than just unlocking guns and certain abilities. Like in the game, like in the multiplayer this time around, you now have abilities like unlocking a brute sidekick, a sniper sidekick, savior, hunter. You also have other myth, mythological, mystical abilities like a Chintamani stone, a staff of Amar Marco, and then you also have your uh, gear and heavy weapon uh, upgrades like grenades, uh, C4, bazookas, heavy like pistols that can kill people in one shot. You name it, it has it. And even though, at times, it may feel unba unbalanced like the other games, it isn't. Overall, it's balanced perfectly well. It's done here with a perfect sense of feel to it. And like I said, customization is actually well done here. I liked it a lot. Making my Nathan Drake look different from others is always fun. And it's always fun to play with a multiplayer match with full of Nathan Drake's looking entirely different. I will say though, I'm not the big fan of the microtransactions at times. It can be pushed in your face for certain parts when it comes to unlocking certain things. Thankfully, you don't need uh, microtransactions. Uh, Uncharted Points is also Relics, which is done through daily challenges to basically let you play the game overall and are enjoyable. I can go on and on to complain about Uncharted once again, but overall, let me just say this. Uncharted 4, A Thief's End, is it worth your $60? It's worth $70, maybe even $80 in my opinion. And I don't spend that much on a game like this because it's cinematically masterful. In my opinion, the Uncharted series is one of the reasons why I love video games, but it's also why I play them. There's something so special about this series, this franchise, that just really grabs you and never lets you go. And that is something you barely get once in a while. But overall, Uncharted is masterful just like the other ones, and I always fall in love with this series. And that's why overall, as a game, Uncharted 4 gets a 10 out of 10. It's a masterpiece in my opinion. Now, you might not agree with me, you might criticize it to the point where you'll give it a 9 or lower, who knows, you know, but overall, Uncharted 4 Thief's End is an exciting, thrilling, and satisfying game with a satisfying conclusion for this possible franchise. Now, I don't know what Sony will do next with the series, maybe make spin-offs, more prequels, who knows, but overall, I love Uncharted 4 Thief's End, and if this is truly the end of the series, then I'm in love with it, and I think it's a great end to the series as a whole. 
you know? And thankfully, I just had a great time playing this game from beginning to end. So please like the video, guys. Comment below and subscribe. Also, follow me on Facebook, Twitter. And just hang out and we talk to me whenever you want. And I'll see you guys in the next episode of the Mike Legacy 7. Goodbye. Yeah. <laughs> you good? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get out of here.